So any member of the public who would like to comment on anything not on our agenda, or who would prefer to comment now rather than waiting to when the agenda item comes up for discussion, uh, please let us know. Cynthia, how are we um, maintaining this list? Uh, we'll start with Shannon Walkley. Hello, can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, my name is Shannon Walkley and <laughs> I'm- yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, I am a, an employee of College of the Redwoods. I am approaching my 18th year with the college and began my work at the Del Norte campus and spent several years at the Eureka campus and I'm currently uh, back at the Del Norte campus as a student development advisor. I'm also a parent of a College of the Redwoods student, so I just wanted to point that out. Um, Goal is to um, speak to you regarding the item on the agenda regarding layoffs that occurred in June. Um, I wish that this had been published in June as opposed to now because I, um, I felt like there was a lack of transparency and also dehumanization of all of the people who were impacted by this. Um, I was one of the people um, slated to be laid off and given the option to continue my employment um, with having to also consider how I might be harming my friends by um, choosing to bump into their positions. So um, I, for those of you who know what it's like to work at the Del Norte campus, we have a very strong connection with each other as peers and as colleagues and to have to undergo that was really hard, especially after later on when we found that a lot of these positions were hired back. I was laid off and moved into a, dif a different position and I think within two weeks I, I was told I could move back into my former position because the college realized that they needed more student development advisors back. So how is it that there was a lack of work or a lack of funds? We realized or the college realized that there was enough to keep um, many of our um, co-workers funded this was really hard for us to have to go through this trauma. How did it impact students? Well, you know, as a student development advisor, I know a lot of students and they undergoing a lot of the challenges with the pandemic. They were also um, experiencing the challenges of not knowing who was going to help them at College of the Redwoods because there was so much um, confusion and ambiguity about what was going to happen with our future, especially at the Del Norte campus where we lost our library technician and an instructional support specialist working in our library, which um, is not staffed anymore. Um, and I, I'm hoping that in the future when these situations come up that you will work strongly with the CSEA to find solutions to these problems or these foreseen needs um, related to lack of work or perceived um, lack of funds, because we are a strong unit of employees who are very dedicated to our district. We love our work. We love the students that we serve and are essential. And anyway, I thank you for listening to me. Ms. Walkley, thank you very much. The next and, person. and just to be clear, um, the board uh, may not respond to public comments, but we are listening intently. Uh, I had uh, Jennifer Knight in the chat room who wanted to speak at this time. Is uh, Ms. Knight available? I am, thank you. Hi, I'm Jennifer Knight. And thank you for allowing me to speak at the beginning. I am addressing item 3.4, but I have a workshop to give today to my students. So this allows me to do this and then get back to my work. Uh, thank you. And I am honored today to speak a little bit on behalf of CSEA. And, you know, we first would like to thank the board for coming forward today 
to take action out in the open on matters of public concern. And uh, it's unfortunate because today's vote still looks like you're just trying to limit your legal liability. And we still feel a lack of trust here. And we don't know why these wide scale layoffs are, layoffs are necessary. I think Shannon addressed that pretty nicely. And we do not understand why there was such a rush to move the layoffs forward, to move them forward in June when the district, your budget wasn't due until September. So we felt it was a rush process and there was a lot of upheaval because of it. Um, we know that Governor Newsom has stabilized funding so the district has remained financially solvent. And most importantly, many of our coworkers you're voting to lay off again, have already been rehired or their layoff notices have rescinded. So it's obvious that the classified units is an essential part of the Redwoods Community College educational system, right? You need us and we need you. So we understand that in a distance learning environment that some of the classified work would look differently but in good faith, we allowed for positions doing work outside of their normal duties in our agreement with the district to account for these changes. And the cuts to classified services, as Shannon highlighted nicely, they will not be available for our students in the future. And they won't be available for our faculty and the campus at large. And this is whether we are in an in-person or distance learning environment. So for this reason, CSEA still opposes these layoffs as unnecessary and harmful to college services. CSA also opposes the board taking this action because you know, again, it's a gut punch to all of us. We show up, we do our jobs for students and the campus every day. We are loyal, we're professional, and we do our jobs well. Please, this is another moral busting action by the board. And thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Jennifer. Next on our um, list for general public comments is Mr. Stuart Altschuler. Altschuler, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name, Stuart. No, you got it fine, thank you. So, um, I also want to acknowledge that I a, a, an employee at College of the Redwoods as an associate professor in addiction studies, but I'm not speaking from that perspective and I'm not speaking for anything or anyone else uh, from the campus. I'm speaking actually as a voter. And um, I believe that you've all saw the letter that was published by me in the Ferndale Enterprise uh, that had to do with the reappointment of Tracy Copini to the uh, Board of Trustees. And the fact that two years ago when Bonnie Deister was elected, uh, she was elected by a wide margin, okay? 57% to 43%. Um, over 1,542 voters elected Bonnie Deister, um, which was a clear mandate that Area 1 uh, voters wanted somebody new in that position. The fact that the Board of Trustees, when Bonnie had to leave for family issues, decided to put Tracy Copini back onto the Board of Trustees was a slap in the face to the people who vote in Area 1. And I know a few of you were re-elected very recently. And if there had been more time between this situation and the election, and this word had gotten out, I dare say that some of your elections might have been much closer than they were because there are people that have been in touch with me from a lot of other areas, people who um, are very angry and upset that you so dismiss the democratic process and the will of the people of Area One um, 
that you have been talking about diversity and equity and issues like that, uh, that President Flamer has been writing eloquently about and that the board seems to support. And yet you had the option of actually diversifying the board of trustees with the other two candidates. Um, that um, I, was, I was walking down Main Street here in Ferndale the other day and a friend of Mr. Copini's told me that he felt that my letter maligned Tracy Copini and that somebody on the board actually had asked him to put his name in for this. Um, and so that should have made it okay. And I'm not maligning Mr. Copini. It's the board's process and decision that you need to realize it's not just me. There are thousands of other people around this county that has seen what's happened and are very upset by this. And I really think that the solution is, and I know you won't do it, is for Mr. Capini to step down and you decide between the other two people. Um, that is, there's a lot more I'd like to say, but it's all in my letter. And um, thank you for listening. Thank you. Next on our list of um, public comments is uh, Adrian Dobson. Are you there, Adrian? Yes, I am. Uh, my name is Adrian Dobson. Um, I am a custodian at the uh, Eureka campus. Um, I've been here for about a year. Um, yes, I also wanted to speak on the same things. Um, we know that the California legislature made sure we did not lose funding in these difficult times, extended the hold harmless, and made it clear that staff should not be laid off. In other words, the college had time. Instead, it looks like things were rushed, <clears throat> where all the I's weren't dotted and the T's crossed to trigger an unfair charge and a lawsuit. CSCA is right. It seems to me it may end up costing more and also end up hurting morale. And I'm still not clear the reason for the changes. It seems to me there's a better path forward that builds a relationship with your employees. And I do thank you for your time. Thank, thank you, Mr. Dobson. Next, at least on my list to speak is um, Ms. Tammy Engman. Are you there, Tammy? I am, but I was going to wait until 3.4 came up on the agenda. Oh, that is, that is fine. Thank you. Cynthia, do we have any other general public comments? No. Hearing none. Oh, I'm sorry. No, we do not. Okay, thank you, Cynthia. That takes us to agenda item 1.2, member comments. Uh, board members may briefly report on college related events and meetings that they have attended. Uh, the floor is open, do we have any public, or excuse me, member comments from my trustee colleagues? Yes, President Mullery. Yes. Um, I, I would like to ask the, um, the board or the, the leadership of the college to consider my renewal for the ACCT Government Relations um, Committee. Uh, apparently a letter of approval is necessary and I just wanted to let my colleagues know that I'm ready and excited to serve in that role again this year. Okay. Thanks, that's Thank, it. Thank you, Trustee Kelly. Are there any other um, member comments? President Mallory? Yes, Trustee Biggin. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to do a shout out uh, to the efforts that uh, faculty and staff have made to use social media during this time of virtual instruction. I particularly enjoyed um, participating in the uh, Meet the Artist event that was done on October 21st. And uh, Professor Hooper um, gave an excellent um, overview of the current exhibit in the gallery uh, featuring Linda McDonald. Linda McDonald was there and interviewed. Um, it inspired me to Google her name and, and realize what an exceptional artist she is along the North Coast. 
Also, the art department uh, utilized a virtual gallery so that the public could get the feel of walking through the gallery and seeing uh, the paintings and getting that really a perspective of the size of the paintings that really enhanced um, the discussion um, of that evening of um, the Meet the Artist. And so I just, I wanted to uh, bring that to everyone's attention because it was much appreciated. And um, I look forward to the time where maybe some of those paintings will be physically present in the gallery that we might see them in person. Um, the other events that I have participated in have been uh, through the Multicultural Centers and um, they've done a number of uh, special programs to feature different diverse groups uh, among our college community. Uh, I particularly um, uh, tuned in to the one on uh, Day of the Dead, Dia de Moretos, uh, which was on October 30th. And then I also listened in for the uh, Native American Day uh, event. Um, I know there's a number of other events and I really appreciate those efforts. Uh, the last thing I wanted to do uh, is to mention and uh, send out a reminder to our trustees about the trustee town hall that is scheduled uh, this Thursday in the evening. Hope you've had a chance to register for that event. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Wigan. Trust, uh, President Mullery. Are there any? Yes, Mr. Matthews. I just wanted to uh, mention that I had attended on October 13th a meeting uh, with foundation executive director and uh, CRDN's executive director regarding foundation's uh, work and involvement with uh, the Del Norte campus and community. And uh, that I have um, attended the first three of the um, implicit bias and four dimensions of racism webinar along with a number of other trustees and many others and um, have found them uh, very um, timely, uh, valuable on uh, many occasions moving. And uh, I hope to finish that series. Thank you, Trustee Matthews. Are there any other comments from my trustee colleagues? I have um, a couple of comments to make if there are no others. Um, first, I, I, I do want to um, thank um, the voters for voting me back in for another term. I, I, I greatly appreciate your support. I um, value my, my... Thank you. I also have um, a report to make regarding our trustee colleague, Trustee Biggin. Some of you may know that uh, Trustee Biggin was elected. This is a statewide election. Oh, gosh. CT board as the California Pledge Board of Trustees in 2013. It consists of the uh, president, the president-elect, the first vice president, and the second vice president. Uh, they looked at all the candidates who were eligible for this seat. They wanted to make sure that their, the candidates were able to meet the time or track record of engagement on committees that they were real that they understood the triple CT priorities and they could speak to um, triple CT. Oh, are you unable to hear me? I can now hear you now. Oh gosh, how much did you miss? <laughs> I'm singing Trustee Biggin's praises. I'm sorry. My, um, okay, didn't hear most of what you said about Sally. 
All right, so I'm gonna say a little bit more. She was first elected in, in um, 2013. I think this was the first time, as far as I know, that we had a trustee from College of the Redwoods to be uh, represented on this statewide um, board, Triple CT, the California Community College Board of Trustees. She has just been recognized for all the excellent work she has done serving on that board. Goodness knows how many Zoom meetings she's been in for the past several months, all the travel that she has done. She was interviewed based on whether or not she could meet the time commitment, which was significant whether or not she was engaged in committee work, which she certainly has been, whether or not she's collegial, and we certainly know that about Trustee Diggin, if she understood the triple CT priorities, and if she could speak to areas for improvement. She has been selected, and I will say again, if you didn't hear me the first time, this is just a four-member executive board. There's a president, a president-elect, a first vice president, and a second vice president. Trustee Biggin will be one of the two vice presidents. So this is a real honor for College of the Redwoods to be represented on this executive board and certainly a, a, a recognition for all the work that Trustee Biggin has Nice, uh, nice recognition for you. Well deserved. Anything you'd like to say? <laughs> well, thank you so much, Colleen, for your kind words. Uh, it really is my privilege to represent College of the Redwoods um, at the state level and uh, to be able to participate in um, the leadership um, of the community colleges throughout California. Thank you. Yes, it's, it's, it's quite an honor. Thank you. Should be at 1.4, or no, excuse me, 1.3. Um, board committee reports, and I suspect that we have a committee report from the audit committee because they did meet today. Is that right? Yes, President Mallory. The floor is so, so uh, <clears throat> the audit committee did meet today for their quarterly meeting, and uh, at that meeting, the audit committee voted to approve resolution. 772 authorizing uh, the borrowing of funds for fiscal year 2021 via a TRAN and uh, through participation with the California League, uh, a Community College League of California's Tax and Revenue Anticipation Notes Program and uh, is recommending the approval of the full board. And this resolution will be on the December 17th uh, Board of Trustees agenda. Okay. So, uh, is my audio on this? It's very spotty. <laughs> is phone in. Um, I think, unfortunately, that's the way I'm going to have to go. Uh, Vice President Kelly, could you please take over agenda item 1.4 until I get back on the phone? Certainly. <clears throat> okay. Um, wow. I'm not used to doing this, everyone. Um, at, this time, at this time, we'd like to discuss item 1.4. Uh, do we have a uh, motion and a second to bring this to discussion? I move approval of the schedule of meetings for 2021. I'll second it. Are there any questions or comments about this agenda item at this time? I do have a comment. Thank you, Trustee Doran. 
So as I've said in the past, that having the meeting in Hoopa, I'm always concerns me about the expense of bringing the board up there and the staff um, from the main campus in Del Norte. And also, you know, last time I was there, the staff mentioned how much work it is for them to have the board there. And I, I just don't think it's worth, worth the expense and the drama to going up there. I won't go out, but I just wanted to make my comment. I'd, I'd like to speak in favor of the meeting and in Hoopa. It's uh, quite a compliment to the community. Um, I've noticed that um, there's been more and more carpooling coming out to Klamath Trinity the site. And uh, I would assume that the expenses are minimal. Uh, it offsets the expense of uh, the trustee having to commute to the Eureka campus also. Um, it's it really means a lot to the community to have the to have the meeting here. So I would speak in favor of meeting in Hoopa in November. Thank you, Trustees Jordan and Biggin. Uh, Trustee Any Cap other comments? Yes, I, I yes, have sir. a comment. Trustee Capini. Yes. yes. Um, uh, two things. I, I think it's um, good that we have a presence have up a there and, and show them that we care. But I'm looking, is there any way we could switch it from November to possibly an earlier date due to like potential icy roads? Um, I would like to mention that we've had in the past used October, but that's a difficult time uh, for the center up here because they have a lot of uh, work involved with their federal funding and uh, applications that are due uh, at the, you know, they're in a fiscal cycle with the Johnson O'Malley project and they have requested the November date. Uh, for the last number of years, the weather has not been a problem in November that early. Right. Trustee Kopini, I'm not sure if I'm, I'm hearing feedback from your speaker or your microphone. Um, since you just sort of Did you not? Uh, uh, Trustee Kelly, it's it's it's, it's uh, Trustee Mullery. It might have been me because I had both the phone going and the Zoom going. I've closed uh, up the Zoom, so I think it was me. Sorry about that. Fantastic, Madam President. I will hand the reins back to you. <laughs> oh, you take the vote. You got you got this. You got this, oh, you got this ball rolling. <laughs> All right, well, we have, uh, it sounds like uh, maybe somebody, if they want to change the date, would need to amend the motion of the, uh, of the visit to the Del Norte campus. Uh, I, I, I'm good with it. I mean, I was just, um, you know, thinking, but it's, it's early November. Okay. Are there any other uh, comments or questions about the um, agenda dates and times, then, or should we uh, have a vote? Vote. All right. <laughs> Cynthia, would you mind giving us a roll call vote? Thank you. Danny Kelly? Yes. Bruce Emod? Yes. Richard Dorn? No. Carol Matthews? Yes. Sally Biggin? Yes. Tracy Copini? Yes. Colleen Mullery? Yes. Uh, the motion carries. Thank you. And thank you, Trustee Kelly. I, I kind of just threw that at you. I appreciate you picking up the ball there. <laughs> Doing that like so. That's great. <laughs> so um, I'm back on the phone. I regret that my internet connection is so unstable today. Uh, that takes us to agenda item 1.5. And this is our uh, meeting agenda calendar. We adopt this annually. We have a proposed meeting agenda calendar, which is attached to the, uh, um, this item. Is there a motion to approve this? I move approval. I second that. All righty, thank you. Is there any discussion on this item? Hearing none, uh, Cynthia, would you please take a roll call vote? Danny Kelly? 
Yes. <laughs> Bruce Emon. Yes. Richard Dorn. Yes. Carol Matthews. Yes. Sally Biggin. Yes. Tracy Copini. Yes. Colleen Mullery. Yes. Thank you. Our next agenda, agenda item, uh, 1.6, is the uh, presenta presentation of the slate of board officers for 2021-2022. I guess I'm just anxious to get rid of 2020. Um, so we, there was an ad hoc committee that was appointed um, to propose a slate of candidates. The ad, ad hoc committee consisted of myself, Trustee Biggin, and uh, Trustee Emod. Uh, this ad hoc committee is presenting the following slate of candidates to be voted on at the December board meeting. And this would be for the 2021-2022 year. Uh, the slate includes the president of the board, Trustee Danny Kelly, vice president of the board, Trustee Carol Matthews, clerk of the board, Trustee Richard Dorn. This is an information only item. Um, the vote will be taken in the December board meeting. And thank you fellow ad hoc committee members um, for um, pulling this together. Our next agenda item is resolution 770 in support for an inclusive environment for all and against racism. This is an action item. Do we have a motion to get this on the table? I move, I move to, to approve. approve. And did I hear a second? I'll second it. Thank you. So the uh, trustees agreed to agendize this uh, resolution that communicates the board's position on racism. Uh, this was first presented as a first read during our October meeting. We did um, amend it to change the, uh, the title slightly to make it actually sound a little bit more positive than negative. Uh, it's up for discussion. Are there any questions or comments from trustee colleagues? Hearing none, it appears we are ready for a vote. Cynthia, would you please take a roll call vote? Danny Kelly? Yes. Bruce Emon? Yes. Richard Dorn? Yes. Carol Matthews? Yes. Sally Biggin? Yes. Tracy Copini? Yes. Pauline Mullery? Yes. Thank you, and, and, and thank you all um, for your involvement in drafting this really important, well, I believe a very important resolution for our district. So this takes me to agenda item 1.8. This is really when I'm sorry I'm not on Zoom. <laughs> but again, it's 2020. I mean, that's the way things go. Uh, this is our resolution um, honoring distinguished trustee Bruce Emod. Uh, before we discuss this, um, do we have a motion to get this on the table? I so move. I second, I second it. Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm going to read this and then I will open it up for any comments. So this is in recognition of and with deep appreciation for the distinguished service by trustee Bruce Emod. Where Bruce e where, whereas Bruce Emod has served continuously and with distinction on the Redwoods Community College District Board of Trustees since August 1994. And whereas during his tenure, Bruce Emott has always placed the success of College of the Redwoods students as a priority, and he has worked tirelessly to advance the interest of the district. And whereas during his 26 years as trustee, Bruce Emott's leadership was recognized by his trustee colleagues by electing him to serve four separate terms as president of the Board of Trustees in 2000, 2010, 2011, and 2019. And whereas Bruce E. Mott exhibited outstanding community spirit as a dedicated member of the district's foundation board 
with no break in service from 1995 through 2018. And whereas Bruce Imad served with utmost competence as a stalwart member of the Board of Trustees Standing Audit Committee for, as he puts it, as long as he can remember. <laughs> and whereas Bruce Imad was recognized in 2014 by the Community College League of California for his enduring dedication and service by awarding him with the Fulfilling the Trust Award. And whereas during his service on the Board of Trustees, Bruce Imad imparted knowledge and wisdom to those he mentored, and he provided invaluable insight, perspective, and guidance to the Board of Trustees to assist the district in fulfilling its, fulfilling its mission. And whereas the College of Redwoods seeks to publicly recognize Bruce Imad's commitment, dedication, and innumerable contributions to the College of the Redwoods and its mission. Therefore, be it resolved that the College of the Redwoods, oh, you know it, I just lost my screen here. <laughs> Gosh. Uh, that the College of the Redwoods acknowledges and extends its gratitude to Bruce Emad for its distingu his distinguished service to the Board of Trustees and his lasting contributions to the Redwoods Community College District and its mission. Be it further resolved that this resolution is recorded in the permanent minutes of the Redwoods Community College District, and a copy of this resolution is given to Bruce E. Maud. Uh, that is the resolution. Um, it is on the table, and now the floor is open for any discussion. Um, President Mullery? Yeah. Yes, Trustee Kelly. Um, I would like to say uh, that, uh, well, first of all, politics is um, ridiculous, and uh, it's sometimes hard to uh, be in a role with colleagues on a board because of politics. When I first uh, ran for this election, uh, I was expecting to meet uh, – someone uh pretty pretty uh pretty mean spirited pretty aggressive and um i got on the board and i was nervous about it and everything that i have known about brucey mod personally firsthand has been a man of character a man who is considerate and thoughtful a man who i believe has um viewed his uh, position on this board to be one of protecting the college, its district, its mission, and the students. And I imagine that if any one of us uh, is fortunate enough to serve as many terms, we too will have plenty to find fault with. Trustee Imad, you have um, provided invaluable history and insight to me as I've tried to gain footing in this new role. And um, I thank you for serving. And I um, imagine that your scope of history with this college will be our loss. Thank you, Trustee Kelly. Are there any other comments? Yes, I'd like to make a comment. Trustee, sounds like Trustee Capini? Yes. Um, Please do so. Yes, okay, thank you, President Mullery. Um, yeah, when I first got on the board in 97, so I've, I've served with uh, Trustee Imad a lot of years. He, his analogies are definitely legendary. <laughs> he always adds a little humor to it, but he, but he gets his point across. Um, you know, they, they think of Trustee Imad as, um, you know, he, he, financial expert and, and all that, and and that is true. That that's so true. But one of his uh, even bigger than that was leadership on this board. He was never ever afraid to jump in, take a position, and he has a lot of wisdom. And he he was he was the first. It is actually his recommendation to um, way back in the '90s, and it was done before I had gotten on the board 
to create the uh, employee benefits um, uh, trust or whatever you want to call it. And he was a, we were for, for that wisdom, we were ahead of the whole state. We were probably one of the first, if not the first. And that, that bode well when we went through, you know, recessions, this and that. And um, he just, uh, he, he's he going to leave a big void. And, you know, that's, I mean, we could go on all day, but that's <laughs> Th thank you, Trustee Cupini. Is there any more discussion on this res resolution? I would. President Mullery? Uh, yeah, uh, I, I think I heard Trustee Dorn first, and then I think okay. I heard Trustee Matthews. Okay. I just, it's been a great honor to serve on the board with you, Bruce. I've really enjoyed your insights. We always haven't agreed on the issues, but we've always had incredible respect for each other's opinions. And I think that that's one of your great attributes is just being able to um, instill respect for, in a, for, for um, the issues at hand. And thank you for your dedication to the foundation and your contributions to the foundation. And we will miss you greatly. Thank you, Trustee Dorn. I believe I heard um, Trustee Matthews, is that right? Yes. And yeah. then Trustee Biggin. Okay. So, Go Trustee ahead, Trustee Iman, Matthews. Or Bruce, if I may, um, I, I could echo what everyone has said, but personally, um, during your tenure on the board, uh, our paths met several times when I was Academic Senate co-president, interim administrator at Del Norte. And so for me, um, serving on the board with you has really kind of brought that whole experience full circle. And as a result, it has really been a privilege for me personally to serve on the board with you. And I honor you and wish you the very best. Um, Trustee Biggin. Biggin. Yes, thank you. Um, I would like to echo what my fellow trustees have been saying. And I'd also like uh, to thank you, Colleen, uh, for the wording of this resolution because it, it's so profound. And one of the areas I really zeroed in on is um, the whereas related to mm -hmm. Trustee Imad's um, outstanding community spirit. He has such a passion for this community. Um, and especially for this college. And that is clear in every action he takes and every discussion he has is, is this deep and abiding passion and love for this community and the, and the district that serves the community. Um, I really I have enjoyed working with him uh, since I became a member of the board and I wish him all the best as he, goes on to another chapter in his life uh, to enjoy his family and his grandkids. I think that will be another profound experience for him. Thank you, Trustee Imad. <laughs> Back into Zoom because I stay somewhat stable. Um, Trustee Imad, you know, it, it's all been said and, you know, I, I want to echo just about really everything that has been said by my trusty colleagues. I'm going to just share one um, anecdote. Uh, when I was attending a graduation um, for the uh, cadets at the, um, at the December graduation for our cadets, my sister was visiting from the D.C. area and I introduced her to you. Oh no. <laughs> well, yes. Um, you are an elegant, wise.
Cynthia, will you do the honors, please? Danny Kelly. Danny Kelly. He's on mute. Richard Dorn. Yes. Carol Matthews. Yes. Sally Biggin. Yes. Tracy Copini. Yes. Colleen Mullery. Yes. Danny Kelly. Come on, Dan. <laughs> He's not on mute, but I don't hear him. He He's, he chatted he yes. yes in chat. Ah, he he um, says yes in chat. Bruce Emod. Uh, yes, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> uh, President Mallory. Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. We have to say the solution. Okay. I think we have we have all votes. Yes. Okay. So the resolution has passed. Uh, Trustee Imad, you're, you're out of order. It's not your turn to speak yet. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so. I stand corrected. Uh, since, since the resolution has passed, uh, we have a couple of things we want to share with you. Um, the district has a small, uh, a gift that um, it would like to share with you. Uh, President. Cynthia, do, do you have a copy of that? Can you hold it up? Sure. I didn't wrap it yet. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm sorry you're not getting to do this yourself, Bruce. <laughs> Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Can you see That's it? It's incredible. Oh, good, 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 good. Okay. So, yeah, that, thank you, Cynthia. My pleasure. Um, there, there's also um, a small gift. Oh, Colleen. alcohol gift. Um, let me see. Oh, this is an eight-year-old single malt scotch whiskey that apparently oh, wow. has been in some keg for 18 years. So I, I, I hope it's not too old to drink. Um, <laughs> from, from what I've read, you know, it, it, it's supposed to get better when it sits in these kegs or casks or whatever they are for a while. Uh, it was um, bottled in Scotland, the Glenlivet. Scotland. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's wonderful. That is so, that is so wait, wait a minute. How, how long are the rest of us going to have to serve to get a bottle of scotch? <laughs> uh, well, you it's know, just in my 26 years. <laughs> and then finally, we have a little toast. So um, I have a glass, unfortunately it's a glass of water um, <laughs> to toast you. I would like to, I'll have something else to toast you later in the day. Um, I just simply have this to say with my toast. May you have warm work. Oh, Colleen. A full moon on a dark night. And the road downhill. To you, Trustee Imad. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Okay, we're done. So it's my turn. <laughs> you have the floor. You may speak, Trustee. Imad. Okay. Th thank you, uh, Colleen, uh, uh, President Flamer. Uh, President Mallory, my fellow trustees, Cynthia, you all have been so very kind and generous with your words, with your praises. 
I, I, I'm not worthy of all of that, but I'll take it. It has <laughs> been an honor and a privilege to uh, serve this district, uh, our faculty and staff and students and work with the likes of you, all of you. You've been kind to me. You have uh, had my back when, uh, when I needed it. And, uh, and you have overlooked my uh, shortcomings many times. And I have always been grateful for that. Uh, uh, and now that I'm walking into the sunset, you're sending me off with a bottle of a single malt scotch. <laughs> no idea how soothing that thought is. <laughs> After the Tuesday, uh, I, I uh, uh, have run out of my scotch, so uh, I, I definitely need some more. <laughs> so thank you. God bless you all. I will miss you, and I will always be there if you need me as long as I can help. So thank you again. God bless you all, and God bless this district. <laughs> thank you. Thank you all. You know, um, in normal times, we would get together and have a nice dinner and by the entire community for all the work that you've done. So thank you. Thank you. That takes us to agenda item 1.9, which is to review our board goals. This is not an action item, but it's on our um, regular agenda for review to remind us our board goals are making progress toward completing these goals. This is a discussion item. Is there anything a, a trustee would like to speak to about a particular goal or all the goals? President Mallory. Yes, Trustee Matthews. I, I don't have any particular comment except to say that having not reviewed them for a while, I was, I was really very pleased with them, uh, with the focus they bring and, um, and with you know, are continuing to make progress on those goals. Thank you, Trustee Matthews. Anyone else? S speaking for myself, um, I, I was really pleased to review the board goals and I realized I should probably be looking at them at least every month, <laughs> um, but I had not. Um, but I, I did feel good on its review. We certainly have a, a ways to go, um, but I, I felt like we were, you know, on the right path to achieving our board goals. These had been set for two years. So again, the purpose of this item was just to look at them, remind ourselves of what we had um, set out to do to, for this two year period and to make sure we're on the right track. Hearing no further discussion on this item, this takes us to our consent calendar. Is there any item a trustee would like to pull from our consent calendar action items? Nobody wants to pull an item? This must be in honor of trustee Emot. <laughs> so, <laughs> it appears that, um, um, just looking for uh, a motion to. I move for approval. There you go. Is I'll there a second? I hear a second. So this is a motion to approve agenda items 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, 2.5, 2 and 2.6. Cynthia, would you please take a roll call vote? Danny Kelly? Yes. Bruce Emod? Yes. Richard Dorn? Yes. Carol Matthews? Yes. Sally Biggin? Yes. Tracy Copini? Yes. Pauline Mullery? Yes. 
Thank you all. That takes us to section three of our agenda, starting out with our monthly financial status report. This is an action item. Is there a motion to approve? I move to approve. I'll second. Thank you. Floor is open for discussion. It appears, uh, is there, you know, um, Cynthia, could you scroll down on that um, agenda item or up, I guess I should be saying. Okay. Uh, Trustee, or excuse me, uh, President Flamer, is there anything you would like to um, say about this agenda item? No, no, ma'am. It's, it's pretty self explanatory. Okay. It appears we're ready to vote on this. Cynthia, would you do the honors? Danny Kelly. Yes. Bruce Emod. Yes. Richard Dorn. Yes. Carol Matthews. Yes. Sally Biggin. Yes. Tracy Copini. Yes. Pauline Mullery. Yes. Thank you, Cynthia. That moves us to 3.2. Always seems a little bit redundant, but what we must do, and this is our um, quarterly financial status report covers a three month period, something we're obligated to send forward to the chancellor's office. Do we have a motion to get this on the table? I move no approval. Move. And I think I heard a first and a second in there somewhere. <laughs> Did you get that, Cynthia? I got Matthews, was it Copini? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions on this? I'll just say I, I was kind of disappointed that the form, and I know we have to use the form, um, now excludes the uh, FTES numbers. I, I always found those interesting to see, and I know they're available elsewhere, but I, I was sorry that the form now um, excludes those FTES numbers, but we have to fill out the form yeah. <laughs> as it's recent. Institutional effectiveness dashboard. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, it sounds like we're ready to vote on this. Cynthia? Danny Kelly? Yes. Bruce Emod? Bruce Emod? Yes, I'm sorry. Richard Dorn? Yes. Carol Matthews? Yes. Sally Biggin? Yes. Tracy Copini? Yes. Pauline Mullery? Yes. Thank you, Cynthia. Next agenda, agenda item 3.3, and this is to review and set fees for our student fee policy. Again, this is an item that we revisit annually. Is there a motion to get this on the table? I move approval. I second. Thank you. President Emod, is there any background, additional background, I should say, that you'd like to provide? President Flamer. Yeah. <laughs> Bruce, you're on your mind. Uh, President Flamer. <laughs> no, I don't. Um, Vice President Morrison, is there any particular background? Because we're, we're not changing fees at this point in time. Right. We're not recommending changing fees. Right. I don't have anything to add um, other than we will revisit this in the spring once the Chancellor's Office puts out the memo about um, it'll be to look at our non resident fee. We might change it at that point in time. Okay, good to know. Thank you, Vice President Morrison. Here's we're ready to vote on this. Cynthia? Danny Kelly? Yes. Bruce Emod? Yes. Richard Dorn? Yes. Carol Matthews? Yes. Sally Biggin? Yes. Tracy Copini? Yes. Pauline Mullery? Yes, thank you. This takes us. We, we can't hear you again, President Mallory. 
Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. You're on. No, there you, go. you might turn off your video. You might. It might work better. On. I only had it on because of Bruce. <laughs> okay. He doesn't really need to see me. Uh, so you can hear me now. Yes. Uh, Tammy Engman, I believe, had a comment she wanted to make on uh, a public comment on three point four. Is Tammy there? I'm here. And uh, did you still want to make a comment? Yes, please. Okay. Thank you. Good afternoon. As my coworkers have already stated in public comment, CSCA still opposes these layoffs as unnecessary and harmful to college services. We know that because of the closed session layoffs on June 2nd, that the district had been paying two separate law firms to defend it in court. It would be the Ayers Law Office out of Reading and also the Erickson Law Firm out of San Diego, which also sent an attorney to argue in the hearing about this case in Humboldt County Superior Court. If CACA wins this lawsuit, it will be entitled to attorney's fees. Adding to these costs to the district is that CSA has asked the court to declare the June 2nd resolutions null and void. That would mean the employees who lost work would be entitled to back pay. We see that today's resolution claims to apply retroactively in order to avoid owing back pay. We do not believe that that language would be legally effective. At best, this language would avoid liability from today moving forward. So if the district loses this lawsuit, you will have paid two law firms to defend you, plus CSCA's legal fees, plus back pay to the employees who were laid off in violation of the open meetings law. And that's just the monetary cost. You've also created a lack of trust by acting in secret. The fact that you're taking this action today in public shows that you could have done it that way to begin with. What has been particularly concerning about this whole issue is that CSCA warned the district in May that it looked like it was heading for a Brown Act violation but the board went ahead and did it in closed session anyways. We believe that you're getting very bad legal advice from the Erickson Law Firm, who is also the firm that gets paid even more to defend this Brown Act suit and the proof charges on a related set of labor law violations. It's even more disturbing that you're choosing to follow the advice from a law firm that's pushing the envelope in favor of secrecy and unilateral action instead of openness and collaboration. We think that the Erickson legal advice is wrong about the Brown Act, and the unfair labor practices that are now at PERP. But even if their advice is technically correct, you can make a better choice in fair favor of transparency and good faith negotiations. If you make the better choice, the public is going to trust you more and the unions and employees are going to trust you more. I just wanna thank all of the classified staff that have come out today to stand in support of this. And um, I thank you for allowing me to speak during public comment. Thank you, Ms. Engman. Are there any public comments on this agenda item? Hearing none, I, um, this is an action item. We need to get this on the floor for discussion. I move approval. I'll second it. Thank you. And I'll just read the title of this uh, agenda item, just to be clear. This is consideration of eliminations and or reductions in classified positions due to a bona fide lack of work and or lack of funds. President Flamer, would you like to provide any additional background on this? No, ma'am, I think it's pretty clear on, on the background information what's before the board. Okay. Is there any discussion on this agenda item? I have a question. Yes, um, Trustee Dorn. So I'm curious about the paragraph that states the district has directed council to defend the action initiated in the Humboldt County Superior Court and has every confidence that a lawful nature of action taken by the board. What's the purpose of that paragraph? President Flamer, would you like to respond to that? Trustee Dorn, could you remind me which paragraph you're referring to? It's the one that is the, in the district directed council to defend the action initiated in Humboldt County Superior Court and has every confidence that the lawful nature of the action taken by the board. It, it, it just, that just seems, 
not appropriate. It doesn't seem collegial, and it really bothers me. Well, the, the, I understand your, your question, Trustee Dorn. Um, the, that, that particular whereas is true. It is exactly what we are doing. So I am not sure what your concern is. Well, it just seems it's like throwing it up in their face. We have every confidence in the lawful nature. I mean, I think, I don't know, it just bothers me. I understand, but that that is what's going on. And this is the, the truth as the district knows it. Right. If I could just uh, chime in on this. Well, you know, I, I appreciate your, your concerns, Trustee Dorn. In a resolution such as this, uh, the whereas is are frankly less important than the resolve clauses. I'm not saying that you know you shouldn't read the whereas is, but it is the resolve clause clauses which are the meat of the resolution uh, going forward. But having said that, um, I, I understand your concerns. Um, but as President Flamer has said the whereas clause that you are pointing out is just simply a statement of fact. Are you all hearing me? Yes. Yeah, sound good. Is there any other comment? Well, I, um, I, you know, I know this isn't what we're, is under discussion, but I would sure uh, like to see relationship kind of restored between this organization and the district. It, it, uh, it of course, I, I only, I often only hear uh, the district side, and I mean, I also hear when CSEA comes and public comment and, and everything. But um, I, I just, uh, I support this administration because. Um, from what I've seen, we've continued to try to act in good faith on these things and have tried to look out for the best interests of people. And um, I, it's hard. <laughs> I think the silence is because it's hard. These things are hard. It doesn't feel good. Um, anyway, I don't know how else to say it, but I wanted to express it because I'm only allowed to do that in public session. So here we go. That's good. Trustee Kelly, I, th I think we got most of what you were saying. You, your, um, your audio connection is, is a little fuzzy. I guess we're just all having some problems today with our Zooming. But um, I, I think we got the gist of what you're saying. And, and um, if I may, I, I, I agree with your sentiment that what we all want is to have... <sighs> Colleen. Can you hear me now? Back yes. in. Um, I'll go back to the phone. What, what we all want are uh, collegial and transparent um, relationships with all of the unions representing employees in the district. Um, it's unfortunate that there was this disagreement, but I don't think this means that we will not We can't hear you, Colleen. Sorry. Okay. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? You keep breaking up. Okay. Sort of. I'm going yeah. to go back to the phone. Um, I'll just repeat what you might have already heard, and that is that what we all want are collegial and transparent relationships with all of our unions, all of the employees going forward. It's regrettable that we had this disagreement. Okay. Yes. 
You know, and I, I do want to add that I, I really heard what Tammy said. I've always respected her over the years. And I really heard what the other um, staff members mentioned and it, their comments all really concerned me and hit home and have me really thinking about this entire matter. Yes. <clears throat> Are there other comments? Hearing none, hearing none, I believe we're ready to vote on this. After this vote, I'm gonna call in. Uh, Cynthia, please. Danny Kelly. Yes. Bruce Emod? Yes. Richard Dorn? No. Carol Matthews? Yes. Sally Biggin? Yes. Tracy Copini? Yes. Colleen Mullery? Yes. Thank you. That moves us to our next agenda item 4.1. Um, as I say, I'm going to get out of Zoom and call in, but I think we can move forward with 4.1. Thank you. Hi, my name is Leah Dunphy. I'm the Director of Student Equity and Success here at College of the Redwoods. I'm also the Director of the Multicultural Center. I want to thank you for this opportunity to share some of the programming that we're doing. First of all, I want to thank um, our trustees for supporting the efforts that we're doing. Uh, many of you have been in attendance at our cultural events, at many of our um, seminars um, and workshops, specifically in the past year and even this semester. And I just want to thank you for your support. It means a lot um, when you take the time out of your schedule to attend our events. Um, it, it really lends the support that we need to keep going. Um, I'll give a little overview of what we're doing, but actually uh, the star of the show are the three students we have in attendance today. I have Tyreek Washington, I have Liberty, and I have Riley Salas, um, who are going to just speak just a little bit about what the Multicultural Center means to them and what serving as a Multicultural Center ambassador means to them. Um, but first I'll go into a little overview of, of what we're doing this semester to meet students' needs. Um, we've looked, well, I've looked at um, the challenges that we've been met in this online environment um, and, and looked at it threefold. How can we keep students engaged? Um, there's really no way to recreate the student experience in the online environment. Um, it's very difficult to create that exchange of information, that exchange of ideas and concepts, um, but we've attempted to do that. Uh, we've attempted to do that uh, through our Multicultural Center ambassadors. These ambassadors serve as mentors to students. They also serve as uh, individuals who provide engagement in the form of some of our student ambassadors do anime hours, some do sports hours, some do exercise hours, some do cooking. Um, we have a pet, pet hour for students, but creating a way for them to engage with one another. Um, we also have uh, Cal Soap tutors who are actively uh, have been making active efforts for engagement, retention, and persistence activities. And we're reaching out to students who signed up for the fall, but never showed up. We're reaching out to students who, were, uh, who attended in the spring, but never came back in, in the fall. We really want to ensure that students who began their education process with us um, are encouraged to complete. Um, we are doing active efforts to, to reach out to the high schools. Uh, to ensure students know that even though we're in the online environment, they are so welcome here on this campus and that we still have wonderful um, offerings here. Um, we, as you can see um, in the attached um, uh, flyer, we have support groups. Um, navigating in this online environment um, is isolating. So we have a trauma and anxiety support group. We have a social distancing social group. <laughs> we have, we've had um, an election support group helping our students navigate um, a lot of the complexities of what they're experiencing. All of our cultural clubs. As you can see, we have a first generation college student support group. First generation students make up 30% of our population here and it's a unique journey 
and a unique struggle, but absolutely possible here. And so we have that, that group. We also have our LGBTQIA support group that's run by one of our counselors on campus, Shay Jones. Um, we have a men of color support group and a women of color support group. We have all of these things in an effort to ensure students still have a student experience. Uh, many of our students, if they're coming completely out of high school, they didn't get prom, they didn't get graduation, they didn't get many of the things that, um, that you would have hoped to have. And so, although we can't recreate any of those things, we can create a place for them to come and have their voice heard, to come and hang out, to come in and interact with other students. So we're making an active effort to do that. Um, professional development, um, several of you are actually have received or are part of the book club that we have on our campus. So you wanna talk about race. I have been over the moon thrilled with our faculty and staff who are participating and who are doing this process wholeheartedly. Um, we have been able to go places in our hearts that I didn't know was possible in a professional setting. So I'm so proud of the participants that we have. Uh, many of you have also participated in our Building Bridges series. Um, I think the, the outcomes of that will really give us direction and how to move forward as a campus and recommendations for how we can create an inclusive environment. We also, this summer, I work with Wendy Riggs, who is awesome, to work on the equity in the online environment. And, and that was an extraordinary opportunity. We'd use uh, USC's curriculum to do a six part series on creating equitable spaces in the online environment. Um, definitely we're working on a, um, I have many ways that we're connecting with HSU to ensure that our students have an active connection with their campus, that they don't just leave us and, and, and go and figure out how to navigate in that space. With 30% of our students, first generation college students, navigating from here to there can feel like a gigantic leap. And so we've created those, um, those connections, both with having their vice presidents come over and talk to our students about um, transfer opportunities and uh, scholarship opportunities, but also taking our students to their campus so that it's, there's a familiarity there. Um, and so we've been actively developing that and creating a mentorship opportunity for our students to be mentored by HSU students, thereby increasing that connection to that campus. The ultimate goal is to create community and to strengthen our community. Um, so we're using a variety of ways to do so. Um, I want to give a moment to our students, we have our three students who are on the line to explain to you what being an ambassador means to them and also um, what being a part of the Multicultural Center has meant to them. So I'll begin with our first participant, our, our first student, Liberty. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, well, being a part of the MCC has meant a lot to me because it's just almost like a family and it's created a big sense of like community and it's just a really nice place and empowering place to come to where everyone just, everyone's embraced and accepted. And being an ambassador has been really rewarding to me because I get to help all of these incoming students or students who are already in in their first year or who are facing whatever kind of problems they are facing. And I just feel like it's really beneficial to me and to them. That's it. Thank you, Liberty. Um, next we'll have Tyreek. Uh, hi, I'm Tyreek. Uh, I'm a third year student at CR and I'm also a student ambassador of College of Redwoods, also a college success coach and being a student ambassador to me is rewarding because I get to watch these kids grow up and experience this college life when, especially being a first generation, generational college student myself and traveling across country from Florida all the way to California, it's a new yeah. experience. And doing that, coming to the MCC, it created like a bond because the MCC to me is a family. Like everyone comes here, they accept each other. 
They show each other new things. We create connections that we haven't had before. And meeting new people and coming to a new environment, it just shows like we're willing to grow with each other and learn from each other and to guide each other during our hard times and everything that we go through. So doing that, I feel like MCC helps everyone who comes around like it just coming to MCC itself is you will feel the connection with each other as soon as you walk in like it's a it's a safe place to be and to to that to me that means everything thank you Tyreek I appreciate your words um Riley are you on the line Maybe Riley didn't get a chance to step in. I want to thank our students for sharing. Are you here? Is that you, Riley? Sorry, the online environment is kind of tricky. <laughs> but um, I just want to thank our students for sharing their story, taking the time um, to really explain what the program means to you. And I, I just want to reiterate again, I want to thank the trustees. I want to thank Dr. Flamer. I want to thank every faculty, staff, and um, um, every member of our community here at CR for the support that they give. Um, there's rarely been um, a situation where I didn't reach out for help and someone stepped in. Um, I'm just really grateful for the work that we're doing on this campus and the work that we will do moving forward. Um, are there any questions? Um, no, but I, I, I have a comment. Okay. Um, it, it's really, really nice to see programs that inspire people and have a real positive impact. It's really, that is a real positive report, but it's, you know, every person has a story, every person has a struggle, and it's really nice to uh, see they feel community and do help overcome those. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is Trustee Kelly. I, I have a question. Um, I don't know if you can hear me well enough. This has been a, a difficult uh, virtual meeting so far. Um, have there been stories of students who would have left uh, our college program if it weren't for the MCC? Uh, do, are you aware of situations like that? Or are you aware also of, of um, situations where the MCC maybe couldn't have helped and the students still had to drop out regardless? Could you talk about any of those? Um, uh -oh. I, I have, I'm sorry. Oh, Aaliyah, it's Tyreek. I was going to step in because okay. actually I was one of those students who was planning on dropping out. But because of the MCC um, and what they've done to help me in many ways, because they offered a scholarship to me for school, which I wasn't able to pay for. And it helped me a lot to stay in school. Otherwise, I would have had to go back to Florida and unable to graduate this spring with the degrees that I'm pursuing. And uh, being a part of the groups that, because I've literally, since I've been here, I've joined, I think, every multicultural group that we have. <laughs> I'm a part of the BSU, the Pacific Islander Club, the every club that we offer, I've been a part of, and each connection I've made has, like, helped me to keep going. Like, without the MCC, I wouldn't be able to be here. <laughs> and well, without... Uh, that is great. And, and yeah. You are to be commended, sir, for your grit and your stick-to-itiveness and, and supporting that um, the MCC, and I'm just, I feel very grateful that the MCC exists for our students. Thank you, Tyreek. I really appreciate you stepping in. Um, each semester we do uh, um, a survey to make sure our services are meeting the marks, and every semester um, we receive comments about the impact that we're doing. Prior to coming here, I was a quality assurance coordinator. So understanding whether the services that we're providing are actually meeting the students' needs are absolutely important to me. 
Um, and so I've had students send letters, I've had students send emails. Um, so I do get feedback on the impact that the MCC has had on them. Um, and even feedback on how we can increase our services or improve our services. And we implement those suggestions immediately. Um, and so, yes, I, I'm, I'm grateful for students like Tyreek, students like Liberty, and many of our other students who we've been able to, to impact their lives because they get to impact our lives and impact the lives of future students um, because their, sto their stories become our direction um, in how we move forward. Uh, th th this is um, Colleen Mullery. Uh, uh, Director Dunphy, I, um, the, I think I can speak for the entire board. We, we really thank you and all that you're doing to support these students. And I want to thank the students in particular for their willingness to speak to the board and, and to share, as Trustee Cupini said, you know, their stories, because every student has a story that's unique and important. And it's important for the trustees to hear those stories. So thank you all. Thank you, uh, Director Dunphy. Um, let us know if there are ways that the board should be supporting you uh, in the future, because I know we all do want to support your work. Thank you. Okay. I, I think that moves us to agenda item 4.2 which is a first read of administrative policies. And I'm pulling that up. Um, this is an information item. It's a first read. President Flamer, is there anything you'd like to say about these policies? Thank you. These, these three policies have been through ASBC, the Academic Senate, as well as the College Council. And these policies allow us to be in more compliance or in compliance with regulations uh, regarding the distance education correspondence, as well as um, uh, um, hybrid type of course, course, uh, courses that we offer in the future. Okay, thank you. Uh, as I said, uh, we will be seeing these policies again in December as a, uh, a second read to vote on them. Are there any questions with any of these policies or comments? President Mullery? Yes, I think that's Trustee Matthews. Yes, uh, I don't have a question. I, I would just like to take the opportunity to note, um, of course, we all know how important this has been with the pandemic uh, for us to to provide courses in this way, but I particularly just want to note the importance of the correspondence education uh, policy and, and procedures uh, because it is what has enabled us to continue the Pelican Base Scholars Program, which can't really be done distance ed either. So um, yes. I appreciate the importance of it. Correct, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Trustee Matthews. Hearing no further questions or comments, as I say, we'll see this again uh, in December to vote on these um, policies. That will take us to agenda item 4.3, which is a report on our institutional effectiveness. Do we have uh, Director Paul Chown here? We do. Or President Emot, or excuse me, I keep saying President Emot. President Flamer, would you like to provide any background on this? I think uh, Paul Chown is on the line now with us. Okay. Director Chown? Yeah, good afternoon. Um, I, I hope everyone has had a chance to read through this. I certainly don't want to go through 20 pages of report this afternoon. I, I would like to spend just a little time uh, pointing out a couple of what I felt were real highlights of the last year um, and then open it for any questions that you all might have. Um, Thank you, that sounds good. So the, the first thing that I, I want to bring up and, and we probably haven't given this quite as much uh, accommodation as, as it deserves, but with the integrated planning, we made a pretty serious change from what used to be called the budget planning committee to what is now the budget advisory committee and while that seems like an insignificant change, the function 
was definitely significant. We went from what was essentially a resource request ranking committee to a committee that actually uh, looks at the budget, looks at the data, and tries to make recommendations on the budget that, that uh, Vice President Morrison puts, puts forward to the district. This committee has just finished its first year of meeting and I'm really excited about the uh, the collaboration and the transparency that this committee uh, provides the district. Uh, also regarding the integrated planning, we there's a significant change in the way we we rank resources. In the past, you know, as I said, the the budget planning committee used to do that. Um, and it got to the point where we had subcommittees ranking requests and the requests, the committees ranking these requests really didn't have context with how it fits in with, with the Ed Master Plan or any of the other plans that, that wanted these resources. And so now the Program Review Committee, instead of ranking resource requests, we're ranking plans as, as to how well those plans fit in with, with uh, all of the long-term plans, including the Ed Master Plan. And so then resource requests are looked at in context with how well did the program review committee rank the plan behind these resource requests. So it, it really helps us uh, have a lot more confidence that these resource requests are being used appropriately. So, but the third thing I'd like to bring up is on page 13 of the report. And this, um, when I started looking at these numbers of comp our completions, uh, the, the results are absolutely astounding, um, particularly the transfer degrees. Having gone from 73 transfer degrees awarded in the 2018-2019 academic year, to 130 in the 2019-2020 year. It's a huge spike. It sets us way over the, the goals that we had set for our vision for success goals. And we had anticipated it going up some due to AB 705, but um, this, this is really just phenomenal. And hopefully we don't lose, lose this with uh, the current state of COVID since our Enrollment is down a little bit, but um, these numbers are just really fascinating. And uh, I will say that, you know, two years ago, before AB 705, the college moved to get rid of the assessment testing, the, the sit and take a test on a Scantron and use that for placement. And it, it traditionally consistently placed students too low and they spent years trying to go through uh, their remedial courses to finally graduate. And so we went to what is called multiple measures and that placed a lot of students into transfer level directly and we're seeing the results of that. We still haven't seen the results now that in this last year, 2019, fall of 2019, we pretty much removed all of the remedial math and English courses few exceptions. So these these completion numbers could rise even more in the next year uh, relative to our enrollment. So I can say that uh, the college was very uh, aggressive in adopting AB 705 and it is paying off for us. The last point I wanted to make, last section of the report, and I normally wouldn't have bothered with this section, but I included it because I thought it was significant. When, when the COVID situation hit us in March, the administration had a lot of difficult decisions to make in trying to continue to provide quality education for the students and a consist, consistent message. And the forming of the EOC, even though it was formed earlier with the power outages, it kicked into high gear over, over the COVID issue. And even though our enrollment is down, um, it, I believe that the EOC was very effective in reaching out to students with messages, with addressing issues that were going to happen. Uh, we, our enrollment may be down, but it's no worse than any of the other colleges and we have a lot fewer resources to help compensate for that. So uh, I give a lot of credit to the administration for 
their handling of, of these events that have been uh, difficult to get through for sure for everybody. So those are the, that's it I have. I'll take any questions. Thank you, Director Chown. Uh, do we have any questions on this? Uh, I, I just have a comment. Yes, um, Trustee Copini. Yeah, thank you, President Muller. Um, on the education master plan, um, me not being around here for a while, um, on their goal number three, reaching out to the um, uh, diff different communities and uh, strategic partnerships, it was really, really nice to see that we're uh, expanding that and making a lot of progress. That was, that was um, really nice from my perspective yeah. to see that. Mm. Yes, thank you. I agree. Uh, President <clears throat> the, Mallory? The, yes, yes, Trustee Biggin. Uh, thank you. Um, I really enjoyed reading this report, and I wondered if Director Chow wrote this all by himself, or did he have some help in, in uh, completing this report? Um, well, I, I suppose I did most of the writing. Uh, I, I borrow a lot from templates from previous years. I, I have a research analyst that helps me compile data. And then finally, the Institutional Effectiveness Committee uh, reviews it and gives it their blessing before we send it out. OK, I, I especially like the, the graphs and the charts that, really, that show the data. Um, at, also, I appreciate you. Um, giving a shout out to, to uh, AB 705 and the efforts that the district has made and the progress that, it, that we've uh, achieved because of the district's efforts uh, to, uh, you know, to, meet, to meet those guidelines. And uh, it, it really, uh, I think we're really ahead of, of a number of districts in the state because of the work that faculty and staff have done uh, towards meeting uh, the guidance that comes through AB 705. Um, uh, is there some point, one other thing that I wanted to ask, is there some point where we disaggregate um, the, the data so that we see um, if there's any discrepancies between various ethnic uh, or gender groups? Yes, you know, in the past, the, the chancellor's office has kind of taken over this role because they have their own metrics and they have access to data that we don't have because they include students who might bounce around between other colleges. So we've typically waited on them to give us the numbers that they've compiled. I have some numbers that, that we've looked at internally, but I didn't feel that since they may not match up with the states, I didn't feel comfortable publishing those. Oh, that's you, a good point. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, Trustee Biggin, you, you raised, um, this is uh, Colleen, Colleen Muller again. You raised a question that I had, and that is, um, who, who wrote this report? It, it's really um, very well done. And I think someone should take credit for writing it um, somewhere on this report, maybe at the end, wherever. Um, I think the primary author should be noted, or if it's a committee, whatever, not only to take credit for a report well done, uh, but also in the future, if anyone had questions about a report, they would know uh, who to ask. Uh, those who have listened to me in the past know that that's often a question I ask about reports. It's kind of good to know who actually authored the report. The other um, note I would like to make uh, from reading it, and it really is very well done, is I, I wanted to thank the uh, faculty, um, staff, and administrators who serve on all of these committees. Uh, you can really see these committees on page eight when you see the flow chart, which I also liked a lot. Uh, so I know that there is a great deal of time and effort that is spent in committee work to make um, this all happen. So I, I just want to thank all of those who are willing to serve on all of these committees so that we have such a, a fine institutional effectiveness um, report. Or is there anything else that anyone would like to share? 
Hearing no other comments. Thank you, Director Chown. Thank you. I believe this will take us to section five, our organizational reports. Um, I do not think, or, or I shouldn't say. Um, President Sakala, is, do you have a report? I know there was no written report submitted. Oh, basically, just and one. I, yes, uh, thank you, President Mallory. Uh, yeah. The only thing I'd like to report is uh, at its last meeting, the Academic Senate had a very interesting discussion on class caps for distance education. Many of us, are, my fellow faculty, uh, have not taught distance education before. So this is an item of major concern to us to be able to maintain the quality of instruction by ensuring that the size of the classes in the distance education format don't get too large. Uh, that's all I'd like to mention. Mm. Okay, thank I, you. I, I do have a question that I'd uh, like to ask. Yes, uh, Trustee Biggin. Okay, uh, I wondered if any of our faculty uh, got a chance to participate in the uh, state plenary session that um, the Academic Senate had last weekend? Yes, uh, Trustee Biggin. Uh, um, Vice President Aaron Wall attended. I, I had a chance to hear the state president, Dolores Davidson, speak yesterday, and uh, she was really excited about the success of that event. She said there were over 500 uh, faculty involved, and they approved um, a new document of, related to addressing anti-Blackness and uh, IDEA, the Individual with Disability Act. And um, I look forward to seeing that document once it goes through all the channels that it has to go through to, to be published. But you have a wonderful state president in Dolores Davidson. I'm, I'm just very impressed with the work that the Academic Senate is doing at the state level. And um, I'm really glad to hear that we have faculty that are able to participate in those state level meetings and sessions. I suppose, I suppose Trustee Biggin, if I may, if there is any upside to this pandemic, it's hard to say that it's that with budgetary constraints and travel and such, it really does allow a lot more of us, all of us at the college, to be able to attend more meetings out of the area and participate. So that's all that I have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, um, Trustee Biggin, for asking that question. I believe that takes us to agenda item 5.2, a report from CRFO, President Michelle Haggerty. Michelle, are you there? Yes, I'm here. So I provided you with a report um, and just I'll echo that I think it has been easier for a lot of faculty to attend statewide meetings. I've been going to um, the Bay Area Faculty Association that meets and Typically, I think it was a happy hour at a restaurant, but now that it's on Zoom, I've been able to attend that. Um, I have in the report uh, the attendance at our, our statewide meeting, our fall meeting for the union independence groups um, and the, the FAC board meeting too that I attended. Um, so, mm -hmm. so we're able to you know, connect with colleagues throughout the state a little bit easier. Uh, travel is pretty expensive. Um, at the end of the report, I wrote it on Friday and I said when I wrote it that uh, Prop 15 had not been decided yet, but it has been decided and Prop 15 did lose by I think 1%. So it was pretty close, but any questions for me? I guess not. Uh, thank, thank you so much uh, for your report and for providing the written report as well, um, President Haggerty. Sure. That moves us to 5.3, um, a report for uh, classified staff from President Tammy Engman. Are you with us, Tammy? I'm here. Is there anything you would like to add or um, expound upon from your written report? Um, you know, I did want to add that um, this has, you know, been a sad time for the classified staff with all these layoffs and, and reductions that we've been going through. And all we've wanted is to be partners 
and helping the college through these challenging times. Unfortunately, all we've been met with is discontent and insults from the district's legal counsel that this isn't our lane. It was our impression that we were all supposed to engage in a shared governance structure with professionalism and transparency. And we feel that the college has seen us as workers and not partners. Thank you. Well, thank you, and and I actually will say I'm 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 sorry that that's how um, how you feel, and and um, others in the classified staff, and uh, we'll do all that we can to try to repair any kind of breaks that there has been in our relationship. That moves us to administrative reports, six point one, um, President Flamer. Thank you. I just have two things to add to my report. First thing is that we're going to um, have a flu shot um, day, Friday, November 20th, that students, faculty, and staff that, that have not already had their, their flu shot, we will have it on this campus from Cloney's Pharmacy. And I think um, Molly Blakemore has sent out um, a communication to that fact. But also, for with, I also want to wish a happy birthday to all of my, my fellow Marines. It's to, to, today is the Marine Corps birthday, and I know several staff and students who are former Marines, and I want to say hoorah and happy birthday to those folks. And that, oh, that's nice. that, a, and that is the end of my report. Uh, does anyone have any questions or comments um, for President Flamer? Hearing none, let's move to um, Vice President Angelina Hill's report. Angelina, are you with us? I am. Anything you want to add or clarify to your on your report? Yeah, there were just a few things that either came up in, in this meeting or that I um, I did want to just add really quickly. Um, the the first is. Um, just based on that institutional effectiveness report that um, Mr. Chown gave, um, I, I just wanted to say that that uptick in uh, degree completion is so pronounced that I, I'm actually working on a, a presentation right now um, for, um, uh, well, I'll, I'll put it in my next board report, but um, I, I had to try to explain because the, the organization was like, what, why, how did this happen? <laughs> What's going on? So, you know, I explained it a lot in terms of AB 705, but um, it's just, it's, it's really pr pronounced and I think we shouldn't overlook um, that aspect of student achievement that, that we're seeing. Um, another thing that that made me think of, um, while the classified members of the staff not in my unit are here, um, I, I just wanted to say that throughout this entire time, um, I, the, the classified staff, in, at least in, as seen by everyone I work with at the college, is seen as highly essential, valuable. Um, fun to work with. Um, I, I wouldn't have realized that we had, that, that the relationship was um, anything other than um, collegial and strong based on, you know, my day-to-day -day experiences with the classified staff and how um, important they are seen by the the managers and administrators and, and, and everyone that, that, that I interact with at any rate. So I am very appreciative of their dedication. I, I think, I don't know how we would be such a strong college if they weren't a strong unit. Um, so I, I just wanted to, to say that really quickly. And then just a couple um, uh, announcements. Just, I just am very, I wanted to let you know, I'm sure the faculty are very thankful for the, um, that you passed the environmental science uh, associate degree for transfer today. That is a, a big deal for them. That is a, um, um, that gonna add a new uh, transfer avenue for students that I think will be an important one, um, especially given our region and, and our theater school. And then finally, and this is not in my report at all, but this is 
going to happen prior to our next meeting on November 17th. Um, there will be a regional American Indian Education Summit. Um, in, in the past, they've had that at the Rock Tribal Office, but this time, uh, you know, it's going to be on Zoom. Um, but I can tell that a large number of people from various tribes, including um, Hoopa, have RSVP'd. Um, so I, I think that's going to be another very important event. Thank you. I'm open to any questions. Thank you, Dr. Hill. Uh, are there any questions or comments for Dr. Hill? Hearing none, I believe we can move to 6.3, and this would be the report from, from uh, Vice President uh, Julia Morrison. Julia, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Is there anything you would like to add or clarify in your report? Um, the only thing that I would add is that, like a lot of things this year, um, this audit has not been a typical one um, since we didn't physically have our auditors um, come to our campus. We've been work working with them virtually. So while last week was our final kind of our, our final visit virtually, um, it was a little bit different. Um, typically before the final visit, a couple weeks before we would get all of the various requests from the auditors. So we'd be working on them before the visit. Um, this time around during the virtual visit week, this is the time that we actually got the requests from them. So we've been spending a lot of time, um, the business office, um, financial aid has work to do with this as well as um, the uh, scheduling side. So, um, and, and Cynthia is involved in it, HR and payroll. It's a lot of work from everybody. So just wanna thank everyone who, um, who is there um, to provide the information when it's needed. And um, we're still planning on having an on-time audit. And so far we haven't heard anything from the auditors. So I think that's a good thing. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. That's always a good thing. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Vice President Morrison. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll go to 5.4, a uh, report from our Executive Director of College Advancement and the Foundation, Mr. Marty Quello. Are you there, Marty? Yes, I sure am. <laughs> Anything you'd like to add or clarify? Yes, I'd like to add one thing. We'd uh, like to recognize Shannon Sullivan's exhibit that's going to be at the Morris Graves Museum from November 14th through January 3rd. Uh, the exhibit is recognizing artwork that's been done by CR alumni, and the CR Foundation is a sponsor of this exhibit. Hmm. Okay. I actually uh, noted that uh, apparently we're going to have some um, movie filming on our campus. A movie production company will be on campus, and I was curious as to whether or not we'd get any revenue out of that. Yes, they have paid us uh, rental fees for both facilities and equipment that they are borrowing. Oh, well, good. That sounds kind of fun and exciting. Any other questions? President Mullery? Yes, uh, Trustee yeah. Biggin. I, I just would like to say how much I'm enjoying the um, mask ads that I see, wear a mask ads that um, that we've been producing through uh, the efforts of uh, Mr. Coelho. Uh, I they're they're so enjoyable to watch, and I I love the idea about you know mask up humbled and. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Trustee Biggin. You know, and, uh, so thank you for your efforts in. Thank you. It's been an exciting yeah. project. Uh, Senator McGuire is recording his commercial this week, actually. Huh. I'm glad and you brought that up, Trustee I, Biggin. I, I was just going to say I, I particularly I just, well, enjoyed President Flamer's ad. I'm also a sponsor. Okay. Um, let's see. Any other questions or comments for uh, Mr. Quillo? Uh, hearing none, that moves us to uh, whether or not we have any future agenda items. I'm at uh, agenda item 7.1.
This is an opportunity for a trustee to request that uh, an item be placed on a future agenda or direct staff to give a regular report. I do. Is that you, Trustee Dorn? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. So I, we haven't heard an update on the construction on the buildings and the other infrastructure on the campus. So I, I'd like to hear an update on how that's going and include the solar new solar system going in with that update. Okay. Uh, do any other trustees have any comment on that? Is, uh, are we all good with that? Well, no. I, I guess. Well, it might be good for the new trustees, I suppose. I, I I have been feeling like I've been in the loop on this stuff. Um, but I guess with the new trustees coming on, it, it does make sense, actually. Uh, Trustee Mullery, I think it makes sense. I would like to be sure that the, uh, the administration uh, and staff have time to prepare the information for us. Mm -hmm. So it may yeah. not necessarily mean December. Yeah, I don't think Trustee Dorn was um, requesting it for December and, and unless all that information no, I, can be I, pulled together by that meeting. Yeah, I wasn't requesting for December. I just right. think we, yeah. we haven't heard and we don't have the um, gentleman that used to address the board almost every other month. Yeah. Um, right. So. Uh, President Flamer, um, ha is this a reasonable request for you and your staff? Yes, it is. Great. Okay. I think I hear no objections to this request. So um, thank you, Trustee Dorn, for making that request. And President Flamer, whenever it's reasonable for you and your staff to pull that together, we'll see it on a future agenda. All right, so that brings us to um, the end of our meeting. Um, thank you all for participating in this meeting. Thank you especially to distinguished trustee Bruce Emod for being part of this meeting. And, thank you. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, we will adjourn this meeting at 3.08. See you all thank later. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you. God Bye, bless Bruce. you all. Bye. Good luck. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. See you, Bruce. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. 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 Love you all. Bye, Bruce. Bye. Bye.